for us, every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets, with a liberal air transportation policy, that daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily. Stewart and Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm in London that can help you with all aspects of your legal work. If you are looking at immigrating to the United Kingdom, Stewart and Co. can help you to set up business, buy houses in the UK, and will deal with all your legal works from start to finish. For all your general immigration work, we can help you with that as well. If you apply for any form of visa, where the student visas, settlement visas, marriage visas, or a child wanting to come to the United Kingdom to settle with the family, we can help you to achieve your goals. Stewart and Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm specializing in conveyancing, immigration, litigation, family law, personal injury, licensing, no win, no fee. Contact us today at www.sk-solicitors.com. And do small or big projects with the same dedication and commitment as we do. With the reputation as the leading printing company in the country, when it comes to major projects and innovative solutions, we always deliver in high quality, thus receiving the trust and confidence of our clients. From the moment your order is placed to when it is delivered, we believe in exceeding expectations from the sales manager to the production team, the account manager, and the person delivering your material. We have state-of-the-art equipment and a highly experienced and competent workforce that enables us to deliver top quality work on time. At reasonable prices, we provide our clients with multiple solutions right from conceptualizing, designing, printing, binding, publishing, and distribution. For all your printing requirements, we are strategically located at the Sankumsila Highway, the Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation. We print what you desire. When we touch down, but I broke down. Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. Hello and welcome to another edition of the show Kirfatu uh, here on GRTS and of course if you're following us on uh, the Facebook page, uh, the Kirfatu Facebook page and of course our YouTube channel on Kirfatu. Um, every week we come here to talk to you guys uh, about issues surrounding a country. Uh, of course uh, we bring personalities as well who we believe um, should talk to the nation. And of course, today we have a very special guest among us, um, Dr. Kante, Dr. Amadou Kante. Dr. Um, 
I don't know how to introduce him right now as we speak. Uh, we know um, he is also an aspirant, uh, somebody who is in the process of registering his party. I am not sure if the party is uh, fully registered. We will know all of that. But first and foremost, Dr. Kante, welcome to Kerfatu. Thank you very much for having me. Coming up on Kerfatu. I don't need civil service to survive. Because I'm a man with the potential. Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind of a man can conceive and bring himself to believe, shall achieve. So therefore, I don't need any institution to be what I want to be. In communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gamsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gamsel, Yaibarom. Um, only uh, Dr. Kante is another person who is interested in, 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 in setting up a political party in this country. Last week we spoke to Bibi Dawo, and Bibi, who was part of the PPP and his group, went ahead and are in the process of setting up a new party. Dr. Kante is also in the process of setting a new party. There are so many other people out there. Yep. This, 20 years ago, even three years ago, if you tell me, as a Gambian, I'll be like, no, this is not happening in our country. But this is the new Gambia. What the new Gambia has brought for us is divergent views. Uh, getting people, the educated folks also in the politics. Because before, what we have observed is a lot of the intellectuals have shied away from the politics. But now we have seen a lot of them coming up. So talking to Dr. Kante today will be very interesting. Um, thank you, Fatu, and welcome again, Dr. Kante. And as you said, it's new Gambia, and it's definitely being demonstrated. The political field is now getting crowded. Everybody wants to throw in their hat, um, throw in their hat, because it seems like um, we said new Gambia, and the people that shied away, the people, the intellectuals that actually left the country for too long, they're now coming back. But then they're coming back, and then we had the people that stayed who are also here and saying, why are you coming back now? We're not going to let you guys have a, fit, like a slice of the cake. So it's very it's interesting times ahead. And definitely having people coming to give back to their communities or to give back to their country, I mean, it's definitely something that we need to encourage. Um, it's something that needs to be applauded because, as you said, three years down ago, we had the same political parties. Even people were not willing to join parties because they just didn't want to get into either trouble or they just didn't want to be heard. But now it's, it's a good thing that we have a lot of people coming and we are hearing different names, different personalities, different educational backgrounds and we think that's the way forward for the Gambia. So once again, welcome Dr. Kante and as we go in we will talk about your new party that, new party that you're about to form and why you want to do that and where you want to take the country. Thank you very much, Oli. And I want to first, uh, for, for our viewers who have met, uh, never met Dr. Kante, and of course for myself as yeah. well, because this is a whole new area for everyone here. Like, who is Dr. Kante? Let's start with that. Who is Dr. Kante? Give us an, um, a brief background about who you are. Uh, Dr. Kante is a very simple, humble human being who emerged from the western region of the Gambia. I was born in Buyam in 1968, and uh, I grew up in a small, Buyam was a uh, Fuji counselor, and I was uh, half of my childhood also in Demban, that is Fuji Berafet. And also, I, when I get a little older, I was sent to Quranic uh, school. I went to madrasas to learn the Quran. 
I was over there for five years, and then uh, I ran away from there because I don't think uh, I was observing what I was learning anything in, uh, essential mm -hmm. during that time. Most of the time we were in the field, in the farm, working like a crazy man. And that's what not, I'm there for. I'm there to learn to have an education, but it was a kind of discipline. But I thought that was a very harsh discipline. I tried to escape several mm -hmm. times. And the later I get an opportunity to escape there completely. So I went to uh, my uh, stepmom because my dad and my mom were divorced when I was a baby. I don't even know my mom. So <clears throat> until I'm grown. So my uh, stepmom is the one who rescued me from there. And uh, I was uh, taken to my, my aunt, who was the same mother and fa father with my, uh, my dad. So that in Talending. So I was in Talending and went to Arabic schools over there. So I was fascinated about the English school. I said, so I normally follow children to go to school and come back. And I met this lady asking me, are you in school? I said, no, I'm not in school. But I saw you going up and down. What? I said, well, I, I'm interested in that. So he said, okay, who is your parent? I told her that I am uh, with my uh, aunt. So she had this opportunity to go talk to my aunt and said, well, I saw this. Uh, business child that goes to school all the time, but for some reason, why don't you give him the opportunity to go to school? So that was the uh, my ticket to go to Lajikunda Primary, Lajikunda you know, Primary School. That was in 1977. So mm -hmm. I went there and started my primary education over there, primary one and, and primary two, and then I was transferred to Pakalandin Primary School, and that was in 1978. And then I did my primary education over there from 1978 to 1984. I passed my entrance examination to a Muslim high school. Uh, then I graduated Muslim high school in 1989. So I was here in 1989, and I, when I graduated from school, I started my job search. But unfortunately, it was a very difficult for me to find a job. So I decided to travel out of the country. I left here and uh, went to Mauritania, so uh, my uh, Quranic knowledge was not uh, uh, was not eloquent that much. When I get there, they told me, "What are you learning? This is the way to learn the Quran. So you're gonna have to learn it again." So they taught me uh, the alphabet of the Quran, and then I tried to polish my uh, Arabic. Arabic and uh, Quranic knowledge over there, and then I came back. 19, I'd be there for a year and I come back here in 1991. And I, 19, uh, the later part of 1990 into 1991, I found a job at the Ministry of Trade, Industrial and Employment as an energy clerk at the, a small institution, part of Ministry of Trade and Employment behind GDG, I call Gambia Renewable Energy Center. Mm -hmm. So I had a job as an uh, energy clerk. So that's how I was working until 1995, and I have an opportunity to go to the United States for a short course, and then I decided to stay in the United States. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was just my sponsor to go there myself, though, because it was a scholarship. It's not a scholarship, it was a short course. I applied for it, and they don't have any sponsors for me, but there's a class over there, but there's no sponsor to buy the ticket and the accommodation of, over there. So I. Unfortunately enough, I was um, trying to find the possibility to go over there. It was very difficult, but this generous and, uh, and uh, exceptional man called Saba Fado was the town clerk at that time, um, before he becomes a mayor. So I told him, man, I have this opportunity. I want to go to the United States, but unfortunately I'm stuck because I don't have financial uh, capabilities to do it. He said, how much do you need? I told him, that time I need uh, $5,000. $5,000 was, so was a much. lot, was a lot of money yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, that's no problem. I'll give it to you. Wow. I could not believe him. I said, I, are you, what did you just say? <laughs> he said, yes, I will give it to you. Wow. I said, no, I'm not, I, I maybe I'm dreaming. So I went home, I could not sleep the whole night. So I was thinking, maybe when I come, I'm gonna find something over there. So I was so, so nervous. I was coming, my legs are bouncing each other. Yeah. When, when I get to this office, I knock the door. He said, oh, is that Amadou? I said, come in, in. I get in and I found, he put all the money on this brown envelope. He said, here. I don't know what to say. I was freeze. I was standing over there, freeze. I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. Wow. For about, 
for quite a number of minutes I was standing over there. I was completely shocked. So he said, no, don't worry. You're a young man. I had that, I, somebody gave me that opportunity to, why not? So take the money and do go do your thing. Man, I left that place. I started running. I forgot it. <laughs> because I thought he was going to call me back. To take <laughs> money back. <laughs> I ran away. Wow. I went. So that was my opportunity to go to the United States. In 1995, and uh, I was in, a, I landed in New York. Uh, a, a friend of mine was there called uh, Ibrahim Jaita. Now he's here. He works for uh, um, with, uh, Petrogas, at the headquarters in Banjo. <coughs> and um, he was my good friend here. We uh, spent time together here, but he had an opportunity to go to another state. So I went to him. I stayed with him over there. So I was in New York, and New York was kind of very tough for me. And I had a friend of mine who recommended somebody to me in North Carolina, Mahmoud Mani. He said, I have a friend over there, it's Mahmoud Mani. I will call, give you the number, you can call him to see if he can uh, accommodate you, you can go over there. And that's why I have my ticket to North Carolina. So I was there, and uh, until 1998, I joined the United States Navy. So I was in the Navy. Uh, my job in the Navy was electronic warfare. So uh, I, we studied missiles and radars. So I was there until uh, my graduation. But when I joined the Navy, I did not have permanent I was a permanent resident. I don't have a citizen at that period of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said to them, I don't think this job is something that I should have. They said, why? I said, because I don't have citizenship. They said, you know, I need to shut up and go to school. Let, let us decide that. Yeah. They thought I'm trying to make an excuse not to go to school. But well, I went to school. I graduated from school. We had 10, uh, 15 people class. All ten drop except was five because the class is too tough. So <clears throat> I graduated, and uh, but unfortunately I could not be deployed because I could not have a use needed top security clan, so I could not have one. So they told me, ah, we have a problem. I said, what is the problem? Said, we can't have a clan field. I said, but I told you this before. So now I wasted all my time going to school. Now I can't go nowhere. He said, ah, oh, there are other opportunities over there. You can embark on those ones. I said, what are they? They told me, uh, uh, we have a cook. I said, hey, I don't know. I don't want to be no cook. <laughs> no, I don't want to be no cook. Yeah. Man, I live all over Africa, come here to be a cook. No, I don't want to do that. They said, what about uh, uh, a medic? So I went and researched about medic, what, how, what they do. And when I left, when I leave the Navy, what that will impact me outside the service. Mm -hmm. tell me, you see the medic outside and the one here is totally different thing. I said, I don't want that. I said, I want my job. I said, well, we can't give you that. So you have two options. Either we discharge you with honorable discharge because it's not your fault, or we, you get another job. I said, well, I'd rather go for honorable discharge than to, to this bit of job, I don't want them. So they said, okay. They discharged me. I went back to North Carolina, so I joined the North Carolina National Guard. So that was uh, in, in 2000, June 2000. I joined the North Carolina National Guard, so from the National Guard, that's why everything took off. So I was fortunate enough, I become a technician. A technician has a dual status. You are a civilian and a military at the same time. So I secure a job at uh, North Carolina Military Center as a technician, as a security manager. When I get my bachelor's degree, no, my associate, sorry, and then uh, I get a push to GS-11. So, and then I say, oh, this is good. Let me go further then. I did my bachelor's, and then I go to GS-12. Mm -hmm. Say, then let me do it again. I go to <laughs> Yeah. I did my master's, I go to GS-13. I said, well, let me do it again. I said, ah. So, but during that time, and I get an opportunity to go to National Guard Bureau. It's one of the finest institutions in the world. I work there as a defense travel administrator. That means that uh, all defense travel come through my office where we examine, we examine the travel document to see where it is we can authorize it or reject it. Okay. So that's what I was doing over there, and I go to the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. 
become a budget analyst. So budget analyst is the budget, our budget is $250 million every quarter. That's what we disperse to 52 states of the United States. So that's what I was doing for another four years. And then I went back to the United States, uh, North Carolina National Guard Center again and becomes another travel manager. And the same thing I was doing, yeah, all the travel come to my office now. I am the manager there. Oh, I don't have anybody there except me who do the travel. It's a lot of travel. But I like the job, I love it, mm -hmm. so I can able to handle no matter how the, um, the volume is. So I was working there until my retirement in 2016. Wow, what a fine, what a rich. fine and rich um, career. You yeah, know. And then in 2016, you retired. Yeah, I retired. So what happened when you retired? And why all of a sudden with all of that expertise in the United States, why did you return back home? I said, okay, I came to this country. I think I owe to my country. So, you know, in the Mandinga language, they said, you can talk to me back to So I said, you know, it's time for me to go home and also contribute my economic development. So I said, it's a new Gambia, new atmosphere. Let me go. I came here and invested in real estate. Uh, I created a company where I employ 40 people. So that was to me that I'm contributing to economic development. So I could also reduct, reduce unemployment issues in this country. So that's why I came back here because I thought the environment is very, very conducive. It's going to be vibrant. Things will go smoothly because we have a fabulous president in there. Things will go wonderful, money will be made, lives will be changed, the infrastructure will be made. That's why I'm here. But unfortunately, things just not go that way. Unfortunately. Okay, yeah. so you've talked about how you've done really well when you were in America. Come 2016, after your retirement, you came back to Gambia and invested. But did you at any point in time during that 20th period that you were in America, participated in either politics or in the affairs of the Gambia? Have you been to, because we all knew we had dictatorship. Yeah. We all knew we had people in the diaspora who had, at some point in time, participated in the fight to remove dictatorship in the Gambia. Okay. Have you, at any point in time, participated in any of those activities, or what was your contribution towards Gambia and dictatorship? Okay, during the uh, Yajami era in the Gambia, I have never actively participated in any kind of uh, struggle with that area. I never participated in that directly. Uh, I was a sympathizer for the people, for the country, because I don't like the way the situation is. But uh, I come here every year, sometimes twice a year. And uh, I was very instrumental in the country because I even participated more in here. When I was in the military. I used to provide uniforms for the people, for the military in this country. I provide uniform, the whole package, the whole uniform set, shoes, uh, boots, the whole outfit. I, I used to do that and until the point that I said, somebody told me, you know what, I mean? these things is very dangerous though. You know, because this guy over there, somebody, you know, we people used to go and miss, uh, tell this guy uh, wrong information. So, that somebody hinted me about that. So, I stopped. I said, you know, I have family here. I love my family. And I'm very instrumental to my family, my friends, and my community. So, therefore, I don't want to do anything that will jeopardize that. Because... If you see a danger, or you see the environment, what you can you do? He said you have to use your hand to do it. If you can you do your hand, then you're gonna do what? Yeah. <laughs> Feel it in your heart mm -hmm. and your prayers. But I was praying for this country, but my prayers was answered. So, 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 um, what inspired um, your political ambitions? What really motivated you to even consider uh, setting up your party? You know, that's a very good question because politics have never been my cup of tea. I never participated except uh, in 2008, I think it was in 2008 when Obama came in. Mm -hmm. I participated over there because we want different, we want George Bush. 
Yeah. No, we don't want to conduct any more George Bush over there. So I participated in the movement, and I look at how campaign structures is how the struggle is. We go to door to door, knocking people's door to register people to old people to help people to go and vote, all kind of stuff. I participated in that very, very, very aggressively, though. But politics has never been anything in my mind. I never participated in politics. I never wanted to be politics. I don't want to be no president. I didn't want to. Because what I believe is, I don't need civil service to survive. Because I'm a man with the potential. Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind of a man can conceive and bring himself to believe, shall achieve. So therefore, I don't need any institution to be what I want to be. Mm -hmm. So I can do on my own. So that's why I never participated in any kind of political outfit in any kind. Mm -hmm. So, but what triggers me to participate in the political landscape in this country is what I see. The atmosphere. Because Cicero said, those who govern the country must be the best and the brightest of the nation. So leaders should, ex should possess exceptional, uh, exceptional uh, credibility and morals and integrity. And above that, they should possess great courage, ability, and resolve. Because I think governing the country is just like sharing the ship, especially when storm brings the blow. But if the captain cannot hold the ship steady, that voyage will end in a terrible disaster for all. The captain over there cannot hold the ship steady. Really? That's why we in this turmoil at this moment. So that's why I said, maybe it's a high time for us also to showcase what we know and participate in over there. Because the, it's, a land, it's a playing field where everybody can look for. But what would be your response to those who said, okay, um, when it was tough, the intellectuals and all the educated folks, they, 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 they stood behind, they hide it behind the, the ordinary people. Now that the field is all clear, no, 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 uh, no, uh, now it's, uh, every educated person one thinks this person is not qualified for the job, but they are more qualified. I think there will be a very shallow thinking for people to think that way. Mm -hmm. Because it's not necessarily have to be in that way. Yeah. Because what we need is who will have the credibility who will have an integrating a moral characteristic to change the life of the people in this country. It doesn't matter whether we participated before or just participated now. What about the people who did it? What have they done then? After all these fights, why are we still in this situation? What is the situation right now? <laughs> it's obvious. What is the situation? Well, What's look, your observation my about observation the current is, situation? My observation is we are from the depression going to we are from recession going to depression. Can you elaborate on that? Because why the thing is, the presidency connect with power. Mm -hmm. If I would do it, what would I do differently than what the previous, these uh, the president, the present president over there, I will use the power of presidency as a platform, as a force to provide service of excellent to the people of this country, but I will not let press power president to use me. And if you let any position to use you, then you cannot be productive. You will fail. That's what had happened. But now, look at what this country needs is a poverty elevation and economic transformation. But how can we do that? to create jobs. But how are we going to create jobs? How are we going to create jobs? Because now, you learn from history. I think what this president is supposed to do is to consult Ethiopia, Rwanda, even the neighboring Senegal. What did they do? Because what happened is, let's look at going back to history. In 1980s and 1960s, they said the fundamental secret to economic transformation for China in 1980s and for Japan and the four tigers of Asia, 
they took the window of opportunity during the industrialization relocation. Millions of jobs were created and enabled those economies to jumpstart in economic transformation. Right now, China had 85 million labor intensive jobs to relocate. I think this is the best time for Gambia to leverage that, to create what is called industrial zone. That's what Ethiopia did. They created 22 industrial zone, phase one, and do what is called uh, investment promotions. Within three months, they attract investors from India, from Bangladesh, from Turkey, and China. Thousands of jobs have been created. I think there's something that we have to learn from there. If we do the same thing here, it's only two million people in this country. We will have changed everything in the first or second year. This commotion and turmoil going right now will not have happened because people would have hope. He said the key to economic trans transformation is you have to create a quick success examples that will create inspiration leadership and confidence to the country. Um, you've talked about credibility. You've talked about integrity. Yes. Um, but then people need to trust the person that is telling us all of this. Okay. We've heard all of them before. But what makes people believe that if you are put into power, these things that you are talking about in theory, you can actually put them in practice. Okay. If you can give us real life examples of how you as a person have demonstrated leadership, have created opportunities where there's a culture, there's a, let's say, like how a civil servants, the civil servants here, yeah. a lot of people are not happy with either salaries, with just how the structure is. But if you can just give us examples of how you as a person have changed a culture of an organization and what are the first three things that you would do, let's say when you are voted into office, for people to have that confidence and that belief and trust that these things you're telling us in theory, you can actually put it in practice. Well, I just told you in a minute ago, you're going to create. No, what you said was just, yeah, you're going to create, you're going to create. But okay, well, what I'm have saying. Have you ever yes. been in that situation where you've actually done that because we've heard like okay. everybody that comes in tells us the same thing. Okay. When I go into power, I would do this, the youths need jobs, I would create jobs, we would have industries, we would have factories, we would, I change the health system, I would change the education system, I would do reforms. Okay. And then when that person comes in, it's a completely different scenario. Yeah, I know, because so you know you what? have examples of but real I, life. I have a real life example. I have a company where I involved 40 people working over there. I gave them opportunity. I could stay in the United States. I can be like every Gambian. All of these politicians are sitting out here trying to jump on that. What did they do? I have a company where 40 people work and I pay them every two weeks. I don't pay them every month. Yep. The month is too long for me. I pay them every two weeks. I introduce something new so they can get access to their salaries in early time instead of sitting for the whole month because I know how it is. How many people are depending on those 40 people? A lot. A lot. It's an extended So I've changed something. At least I have somewhere to start. But we need somebody who would raise the confidence of the Gambians. Okay, but now I raise the confidence <laughs> because now I have somewhere to start. I created a company. I employ people there. They work. And I said, okay, there's a lot of things also I did because there are certain things are necessary to pop up. I'm very instrumental to my society, especially where I come from in North Carolina. Everybody knows I'm the imam of the community. I did the best in the community. You know, I did everything I can. And everybody can uphold that. So, so, so that brings me to my next question. Yeah. Um, I wanted to come to the party itself, but you just mentioned, I also know you're the imam of, you, you're an imam. Yeah. So, so, so the Gambia, what kind of leadership are you going to bring to the Gambia? You, 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 you are an intellectual, you, you went to Islamic school, you, you went to Arabic school, you also went to English school, and you are an imam, and Gambia is a secular state. What kind of leadership are you bringing to us when, if you're given the chance to lead? It's not about religion. Yeah. That's it's about important. doing the right thing. Good. My brand is doing the right thing. That's my brand. The Quran said, 
الذين ينفكون اموالكم بالليل والنهار سرا وعلانيه فلهم اجرهم عند ربكم is those who spend their wealth or their property their knowledge in the day and the night in the secret and openly ah, those are the ones going to have a reward those are the ones going to have a reward from their lord and those will have no fears no shall they have any grief look at that how beautiful that is you providing service and significance that's what is going to last a lot forever that's what's going to last forever so this is what it is so 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 let's talk about his party um so have you thought about a name have yeah, you okay. registered what is the status okay right uh, now? Uh, we 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 haven't registered yet we came with a name it's called civil democratic party civil democratic party yes and we don't we haven't registered yet we are thinking about probably november december film time maybe before that time but that's what we, because what we think is before we do any registration we have to travel all of the country talk to the people ask for their opinions their prayers before we do so when we stand there they will say who is this person they say, oh we know him that's why we wanted to do it mm -hmm. and also what i believe in when you create a party before you're thinking about people in the country what about the people in the party what difference can you make in their lives do you know where they eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Do you even know where they sleep on the bed or on the floor? Do you even know where they the clothes that they wear to come to your meeting? Do they even borrow it or they own it? This is more concern to me. What impact can I have somebody's life? You know I have my blessings, you know I have my pity until what is more dear to you and you give. This is what it is. So if I cannot succeed, I don't want to bring back on president. <coughs> so, because it's not for me to be a president. That's not the point here. The point is the power of presidency. That's what I need to make the difference. So now you've talked a bit about the vision that you have. Yeah. But maybe if you can elaborate more on your vision and how you can translate that vision, vision into action. Okay, translating to that vision, I think I elaborated that before. It was this, my vision is, to, most of the things that we need this country to move forward is in, to, in poverty, to elevate poverty. There are two elements to this, job creation and economic transformation. Because we can see there's a lot of opportunities for us to do this. Yes. So when we look at the history and we look at the success people who succeeded in the economy, look at Rwanda. Rwanda is a landlocked country. But because of creating the industrial zone, it become from a landlocked country to land link country. If Rwanda can do it, what about Gambia? Remember I have more population than Gambia? Can we learn something from Rwanda? Yeah. Of course. What about Senegal? Senegal also created an industrial zone in 2018, 17 to 2018, and they are working on the phase two. That will create a thousand of them. Can we learn from something from Senegal? Of course. Ethiopia is the one who started it. They created 22 industrial zones with thousands of jobs have been created in there. Can we learn something from there? So then we have all things in our face that but we can... But our scenarios are different. Our scenarios are different. The budget, Senegalese, let's talk about our neighbors here in yeah. Senegal. Yeah. Um, Senegal, they have a bigger budget. They have more resources. Mm -hmm. they, uh, what do we have? What, what specific um, natural resources that, uh, of our country are you going to um, capitalize on to, 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 to be able to do all these things you're talking about? Okay, but the thing is, we... It's not about, we have, how many Because we don't have to always, um, uh, um, always rely on donors. No, but the thing is, and loans uh, no, to, no, to develop we, we, our we, we, economy. We, the economy is... We don't need all that. We don't need all that. What I'm saying but is... What, what but specific natural resources are you going to... Uh, or mechanisms and means uh, and ways actually, you Actually, we don't them. need to create any national resources or anything else. We created a zone. Mm. And we invite investors to come and invest here. That's what we do. Mm. So look at this country. 
when we invite investors to come and when we created our zones, we invite investors to come and invest here. You have URR, CRR, uh, NRR, LRR, and you have West Coast. So we we'll look at the divisions. These investors will come, and we give them tax free. This is this is what I said, tax free. That, that's why I come here before yes. you even go further. Okay. That is what we have right now. Okay. And what is happening right now? The the the, the, the government is giving tax breaks okay. to all these big investors, okay. and they are forgetting about the local businesses. The local businesses are dying. These investors, that's they right. make all these monies. They change it into foreign exchange and they take the money back. Because and at the end of the day, the ordinary Gambians don't benefit. Because they don't pay good salaries to okay. the local people. Okay. Because there are no labor laws that are protecting our youth. Exactly. So that's all of these so things. So you can't blame the. But giving person. giving tax breaks to foreign to foreign investors and letting the local businesses suffer it's might not, not be a good opportunity. No, good, no, no, good, no, no, good no, 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 no. That's not. Well. That's not. Because the thing is. Everything has the base and the rules and regulations. So if you just open the barber, if you just open the Pandora box like that, just leave it go, everything is fly. So everything has to base and prospect. So that's why I said those who govern must be the best and the brightest of the nation. If you come and invest, you have to use 10% of your revenue to the communities that you operate. Okay, now, do you think so if you do that, okay. what do you think is going to happen? So then we have a development. We got to have we have a labor intensive job that we create. We can have high paying jobs in this country. We can do that, but it depends on how we situated though. So why these people come here and they create they, they make money and take it out of the country, country and go and they pay less salaries to our people? We created that. Okay. We have what we have, have to create an environment. Mm -hmm. We have to create an environment that we cannot able to do that. We also have to invest on capital, human capital development. We have to train our people to have more skills. So the skill sets that should be created in that way, it then can have a market value for their skills. This is the problem that we have. Look at our institutions. Look at our skills in the Gambia. It is perpetual when you look at it. No offense to Gambians, but I think we need to invest in over there. Okay, so now um, you keep talking about how we should, ha we should get the best and the brightest. So then, do you agree or are you against that we need to have a certain standard in terms of when it comes to the presidency? They need to be educated to a certain level. However, yeah. that creates an opportunity that it seems we're giving to a certain area or certain group of people compared to others because um, education in the Gambia to be honest, it's not on a fair level ground. Yeah, in, in So if we create, and then sometimes you being educated to the highest level does not make you the smartest when no. it comes to policies. I agree. So if we have like, let's say that the presidency, you have to have a bachelor's degree, for example, okay. or you have a master's Yes, I agree, we need to have high standards as well. Yeah. Okay. But then how fair or balanced would that situation be? And what would you, what is your take on that? What do you support? Because what I'm saying is, I don't, I'm going to ask you what degree do you get from the university. Which I'll one? ask you what is your vision for my country. Mm -hmm. That's what's more important. But you can have a vision for a country, okay. right? But then, because if we're looking at, looking at the smartest and the brightest, okay. usually it comes through education. Okay. And experience and exposure. Okay. Right? But then again, if, because people just keep talking about, that's why, Everybody says all the intellectuals came back because they feel because people feel that oh we need somebody who's educated. That's one of the reasons. It's not the main reason, but that's one of the reasons why this time around, in this whole crowded field, we have a lot of educated people coming into the field. Okay. Yes, it played. It, it is an influence. Yeah. Okay. So now there's been debate going on. Some are saying we need to have a very high standard of education for the president because if the president is educated to a certain level, they might not make certain decisions that. Not necessarily this present president, but in general, they would not make certain decisions that they are making. So I just want to know what's your take on that argument. It, 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 you see, it's not about education, it's about critical thinking ability. How you can think outside the box. That's what is more necessary here. You know, intellectuality have no base on education. Yeah. 
It does not. Right. But people think if you are educated, you are intellectual. Exactly. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. There are janitors are intellectual. Mm -hmm. There are beggars in the streets are intellectual. Mm -hmm. There are nomadic people who are numb to the change of society where they are. They see how they can transform in them with themselves within their society. That is an actual intellectuality. But you have no base on how much degree do you have, what research degree do you have, or doctorate degree do you have, bachelor. They have no base on that. What we need is somebody who have a critical thinking ability, who have a good vision. Because what I look is that if you have a vision, the vision and the priorities of a country becomes your national agenda. And based on the component of national agenda, you create what is called realistic and attainable platform. That's going to be your mission statement. That will project and set the tune to the projects and, and the uh, programs and the policies that you need to set when you're in terms in office. Then we come to implementation phase. When you come in, you have to do a total re review of the existing uh, in, in systems and connect with the troubled ones, the one that can be modified or completely get rid of it. Then we come to coordination and direction. That's the most difficult thing. But there must be a benchmark somewhere. Yeah, what I'm saying. But I think also, I think yeah. also, I think also, when it comes to the presidency, um, personally, I think. It, for the president, it's not about. It doesn't matter if you have a certain education. No. It's the technocrats that surrounds the president who put out all these policies together. That's what I'm coming to. That's what he says. Before. What he says as the president, you should have a critical thinking. Exactly. You should be able to have a good vision, but you don't necessarily have to be a okay. bachelor's holder yes. or a master's. Which I agree. It is the technocrats who do all these jobs. That's what I was coming to, but he stopped uh, me. Yeah. What, I, what I'm saying is, yeah. if you, that's what I'm coming to directing and because, coordinating. Because also, I think one thing people also need to understand, yes, this debate is going on, yeah. but if you look at, for example, I think um, during Jawara's time, the argument was um, our, our educational level, we didn't have a, a university yes. at that point, so it was high school. Now we have a university, we but too. when did we have the university? But also, I mean, all the presidents that we had, Jawara was a, Jawara was a, he was an educated president. What was he able to do? <laughs> so, no, no. So, so, so don't, you cannot, for example, if you go to Mugabe, yeah. Mugabe was educated. Yeah. He was a, what, was a doctorate holder or what? Is it was a badge? I think it's a master's degree. Donald Trump is educated yeah, he's in America. Yeah. What is he doing? <laughs> so much. it's not about the education. We can go on on, on about yeah. examples. I think it's about the critical thinking. Exactly, that's it's what it is. It's about the critical thinking you, you, and the people you surround you yourself with. with. But Very important. We need to know one thing, though. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. the president takes the decision on his own. That's why the right? critical thinking comes yes. in. Yes, that's I the know. critical thinking. But then, because for somebody to think, to think critically, yeah. Yeah. you need to have a benchmark. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So now, is that benchmark? That's the argument. Is, is about is, how is, should it, it be a certain level of education okay, what, what or a think? certain level of exposure? Yeah. Be, be, because what I'm saying, Tito, the education is uh, when you look at it. To me, it's not a fair test to someone's knowledge, though, because if somebody can be educated but they don't have wisdom. Yes. There's two things attached mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about education with wisdom. That's the benchmark. Yeah. Okay. That's the benchmark. Okay. So you now, need to have a benchmark. benchmark. <laughs> education you, with, with wisdom. wisdom. Yes. That's what okay. is the benchmark. Mm -hmm. And then I was telling you about coordinating and directing because there are people that's going to, to make sure that the elements of a national agenda is realized. So selection of those people have to be very crucial. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to surround yourself with. Yeah. That's the key. Because People, surround yourself with the people who want the best for you, who want to be you at your best. Don't surround yourself with the uh, galong like psych people. Surround yourself with the barrel psych people. Those are the ones that when you surround yourself, you will succeed. But if you, if you surround yourself with the galong like people, you will fail. Because they ain't going nowhere. Look at the gallon and the barrel. When you put water over there, which one contain more? But like minds. Go okay, together. nine minded people. Like minds go together as well. Exactly. So the people so surrounding you kind of define who you are. Supposed to be the one that surrounds you because there are four people that apply for a position. One does not have the knowledge, don't have the character and the know how. That's what actually we institute in our institutions. Those are the ones who got jobs. That's why we fail. Second is someone will have the knowledge, but no know how and the character. But in the knowledge side, it will succeed when we go to character and the know-how, it fails. Someone will have a character and the know-how, but don't have the knowledge. In the know-how and the character side, it will succeed, but in the knowledge, it's going to fail. 
but someone that we need in the directing and coordinating the people who have the knowledge, they know the know-how and the character, we put them there, then we'll succeed. So this is a crucial point that we miss. Yeah. Goes, and the president has to be very social also. <laughs> because now, after all this high, plus are put in place, and now you have the people that are going to make to make sure the national agenda is realized. Now feedback and evaluation have to take place. You have to interaction with them. You're not going to be sitting at a place just eat and sleep. No. You're going to have to have interaction with people. Then you will know what's going on. Then you will you learn because human learn to each other through interaction that we learn. But it's not by through information to somebody to somebody. No. You have to see and believe in. That's how we do. You come. I give you the ministerial post, I give you all the resources and the tools you need for you to succeed. So now I have to evaluate you. Not only the feedback you give me. If we do that, then we'll be able to succeed in any endeavor that we take. So we will take our first commercial break. When we come back, this has been an interesting conversation. When we come back, we will look at uh, what is this assessment of uh, the country, the civil service, um, the, the economy, and also, of course, the borough presidency. We'll okay. take our first commercial break. Coming up on Care Far Too. My assessment to this government is the government lacked the substance, the whole substance, to be productive and be effective, provide effective leadership this country needs. I'm <laughs> Desordre, ça a Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Busubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electric electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property.
fe lempo waru galasi kepo ko xamne domi rew mi nga ak ñu fi dekk bu fekke ne ci at mi sa kom kom wessuna ñaar fuk ak ñenti junne dalasi mbete wer bu neka di nga am lu tollu ci ñaari junne dalasi lempo ci la ngour gi di sukande ko ngir liggey yokute rew mi ji ar e moy bang has bu ngouri gambia sas ngir mu feye ko lepp luy lempo ci bir rew mi be taxna ji ar e di yegal fey kati lempo yi ne waru gala pour ñu fey lu ñu nan wit holding tax on contract payment manam bepp contract bu way joxe te ci bir rew mi lañu to kon xaliss contract bi ngeen nangoto war nga ci wañi ci xayma témer bu neka fuka bu feke ne contract bi dekku ci bir rew mi bu boba di nga waro wañi témer bu neka fuka ak jurom li moy lempo bu ñu nan wit holding tax on contract payment li moy lempo bi nga xamne yow mi joxe contract waru gal la nga wol bate ku dem fey ko ci makani jiare tax office bu la gëna jégué mbété ci banki jiare jagléel pour fey lempo war nga jébal lempo bi ci diiri fuki fan ak juroom ganaaw bi nga wañé ci xaali ci contract every young gambian dream of a university degree he wants a good paying job after graduation a pretty wife and ultimately own a dream home what if i can't afford my desired dream home and that is why you need to visit universal properties we specialize in customer satisfaction we listen to every of our clients needs when we show the properties to our client before you know it you hear the client saying i like this house this is the room that cuts my heart and most of the time they cling to the door never to let go most clients want to close the deal right there and that is why we always have their contracts in the trunk of our cars we walk at our client's pace no haggle no hazard we're waiting for you at our office in Kairaba Avenue here in the Gambia have you run out of cash power do you want to transfer funds to your family or do you want salary advance without coming to the bank Your banking services have just been brought to you on your mobile phone. Download and install from your App Store or Google Play Trust Bank's mobile app. Simply search for TBL Mobile App and follow the instructions. You can access the following services: funds transfer, cash power purchase, forex rates inquiries, mobile airtime top-up, mini statement, balance inquiry, TBL app. It's the only app that allows you to take salary advance and many more. You can also interact with your customers using our USSD code by dialing star 533 hash. At Trust Bank, we bring innovation that is useful to you, our valued customer. With our mobile app and USSD, banking is at your fingertips. Trust Bank Limited, proudly Gambian. Um, welcome back to part two of this interview. I think it was important uh, for the first part. We talked about him. We talked about the vision he has for the party. But it will be interesting as somebody who is interested in politics, somebody who is involved in politics now, to 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 also know what is his perspective. Um, how would he assess this government right now? What's your assessment? Almost three years into Baro government, what is your assessment of the government? Because my assessment to this government is the government lacks the substance the whole substance to be productive and be effective provide effective leadership this country needs because what the current administration doing they trying to reposition them so they can stay in power but they are not paying attention what they can provide for this country these leaders should take the interests of the nation above their own That's what it's supposed to be. But at this stage, what we're looking at and saying, for three consecutive, coming to three consecutive, there's no blueprint or framework that you can able to showcase to Gambians. Of course, there's the National Development Plan. plan. National Development yeah. Plan is just in theory. But what direction is going to go? Oh, oh no, but the, the National Development Plan has been developed. Okay. Funds were secured. Um, <laughs> 
and then some are coming in grants, some are loans, and we have seen <laughs> some of the development yeah. wars have started. Okay, where? In, in Basse, they have started the, the roads, and are they have started... Are you kidding me? Where? Yes. In, in up country. Uh, uh, oh, where, no, where? seriously. Okay. Like, I want okay, somebody to take me over there. No, yeah. seriously, I want to see doctor. There, there are certain things, um, even in the health electricity sector... Electricity as well. Maybe. You know, the electricity, the health sector... Uh, the, 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 I think the French government did pop in 50 million. So there are, there are a lot of issues. There are things that are, is coming in slowly, but the national development plan has been developed. National and they're working towards it. I'm not sure if they will be able to get the entire money that was pledged, but it's being rolled out slowly, anyway? doctor. You are not following them, though. I'm, 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 I'm following closely. You are not closely. following me because I'm, this is really happening. Something okay. is really happening. Okay. Something it might be slow, but something is happening. Okay, but, but what I'm saying is, he said... Uh, the National Development Plan. Mm -hmm. We all heard about the National Development Plan. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to be very crucial when we come to this government. Mm -hmm. Okay. But at the same time, I'm looking at the good governance and also things that we need in this country at this moment. Those are the things that's lacking. Like what? We have, do you know the employment rate in this country? No, I know it's low, but I don't know exact figures. It's low? It's higher than anything. Can unemployment, I mean. Unemployment, yeah. Unemployment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's high, yeah. Exactly. You said employment. I said no, that's low. Unemployment. Yeah, unemployment is okay. very, yeah. What about poverty? Very. It's still where it was. <laughs> yeah. So for three years, economic development plan is there. Are we talking about infrastructural development or economic transformation? What do we need first? It depends uh, on what's the vision of the person sitting there. Oh, the person sitting there. I know I'm talking about us. What do we need? As a country. As a country. Yeah. What do we need? What is what priority do we need? Yeah. as a country? Yeah, you know, that, that would be very vague to answer. The no, reason it, is, it, no, it, the reason is, yeah, okay. different sectors and what they feel is the priority. For me, for example, yeah. for me personally, okay. I would say the health system is my priority. Okay. But far too, it could be education. Okay. If somebody sitting somewhere, it's the agriculture. Did, when so was it yeah, but then we are looking at majority of the population. But okay. that we are looking at the majority. Test the okay. majority okay. of no, the no, population. No, no, let me ask. No, you. if you look at, if you look at, for example, <laughs> we only, just hear views. No, only no. no, it's not about okay. views. It's that, about, that, 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 for that, example, that, when you say um, poverty level, how, what is the poverty that's level as a country? It's very low. Yes. When you say that is low, that means that should be priority. Yes. Okay. On unemployment, if you say what's the level of employment? For me, health is priority. No, no. Okay. Even but, 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 but listen. But then that is okay. the health system. What I'm is saying is, how are you going to solve, how how you gonna solve so health issues when if you don't have no economic structure? If that's what I'm saying. Economy should be top. Okay, yes. so what I'm saying, because economy I said would the main thing that we need is economic transformation. Followed by job. Why you see why we having all these problems? Mm -mm. If people have something to do, they will not be jumping down on the streets. Well, they're exercising their right. right. They're, they're, <laughs> That's something they're exercising their right. But the thing is, because majority of them are carryovers, they don't have anything to do. The youths are here. They use youth, use youth, youth. What they are doing for youths? We're not doing nothing for our youths. The youths not being fair treated. Yeah, they, they don't have a fair share. But in our society, they're not. Because the thing is, what we, what, what the government have done for this? You buying two hundred motorcycles? No, 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 no. That's so. That's, what about the time? That's just different. Uh, the, the, okay, well, I'm telling you now. What is it? We have the yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you train me. Yeah, it's uh, okay. And you then train we need me. To be fair as well. Some of our youths are they making any efforts? Okay. See, this is what I don't understand. When they say, I think, only you are, I think are, that is also a very unfair statement. Yeah, it's you cannot say that the equality. <laughs> you have to also equate. That's why I said some. No, no that is a very only, very unfair only, statement uh, because uh, it uh, is not being fair. Yet. Yes. No, no. Let me tell you, the opportunity that has been created for you and people like me is different from the opportunity that has been created for other youths. The opportunity is there for people to go. But when it comes to for government. No, 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 no. Okay, I no, go. No. I, 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 do you know the story behind that actually? They did say it's for Oli and Fatu. Okay. No, but no, 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 no. people okay. to well, See, but do you I, know I, I that even to, to qualify for the youth, pro, uh, you have to be a certificate. This is what we, when we had the chairman of um, CR, CR. CRR, okay. not said you have to have a certificate. Yeah. What of those youth who went to Arabic school? Are they not Gambians? They have been they have already been disfranchised. This no, that? that's what I'm they saying. are not qualified for that. So that's why that statement kind of looks very okay. well, so fair. I, I, because I, I, I look, agree. Oh, okay, no. you're you going to have I to balance that though. Yeah. Because agreeing. you know, what I see is that yeah. we disfranchise the people that learn Arabic. And other subjects. Only thing they're going to be teachers and imams. That's, yeah. 
and Usa, it teaches the world. Even those who learn skills, so, skills. Okay. And they, no, they, they, have, have, they have projects for people yeah, with they, skills. They have skills also, they learn skills yeah. though. So now we say those people are not part of this. That's what we do. So, hope maybe those people actually will have a good judgment because they have two things that they have to debate with. Yeah. They have Kala Allahi, Kala Rasulullah. <laughs> what the Allah said and the Prophet. So probably those people have to do the right thing. You see, I was pondering this ayah for some time ago. He said, he, he said, oh my people, give fair. He said, give full measure and weight fairly. Do not defraud people on their things and do not act corruptly on the land. If you go to Surah al -Hud, verse 89, he said that. So now, I'm looking at this and say, okay, are we giving full measure and weight? When you go to Arabic school, and I go to an English school, I can have a job, but you don't. All you can do is teach, but I cannot sit in office. I also learn knowledge, though. But if you go to Mauritania, you have French and English. They go to office. They all work there. Then, then this time that we have to introduce English section also, people who learn Arabic and English also can have a, a fair share in this government or in the country. So they will do, be fair how we do this though. But now, that's not even the point here. So we're talking about the priorities. Mm -hmm. The priorities before, if you, when was the last time you go to the health sector and see what's going on? Last week. Did you see two people sharing one bed More than with two. different sickness? More than two. That's what, I went to this uh, Banyulundin clinic. My nephew, when he was about to give a bath, was in labor. I went there. I could not stand. I have to run away because I'm going to pass out over there. What I saw, I could not stand it. I left. What would be your health policy for Gambians? What would you do differently for, well, for ordinary Gambians to be able to have, have a proper health care? We're going to have invest in the health sector. We're going to have the best health delivery system. Not only in Africa, but in the whole world. How? You see the word how? I know. We're going to do it. <coughs> That's what Baron told us. That's okay. what Jamie told us. Okay. That's what Jamie told us. We need to know because, how. We'll okay, the thing is, is, you know, when we say how, now it comes, now it becomes a very vibrant question. How? <laughs> okay, when we create economic transformation, when we create a, vi a viable economy for the country, what else that can we do? do? What else? We can do anything. So first we create an economy that can support whatever we want to endeavor. That's what we need to do. But we don't have our start point for that, though. See, that brings us to my, I know everything. We, sh we will be able to have a good health facility if we have a good economy. Yeah. Everything will pick up if the economy is working for the ordinary Gambian. Okay. But the big question is, how are we going to make the economy good for the ordinary Gambian? As we speak, yeah. when, the, when Jao, J Jami came into power, okay. he, told, he told Gambians that uh, the Jawara government was a, poor, uh, was a, was a, was a corrupt, corrupt government. Okay. He said all of this, we are going to make the economy work for the ordinary Gambian. When he took over, 22 years after, he tripled our debt burden. When, when this government came, the, uh, the belief and the, the promise was we are going to improve the economy. Yes, they, you know, when they took over, they took over a broken system. But still, our, our debt have risen. It's not going down. You know at, some, at the point when, uh, even when the IMF is trying to write off some of our, our, our debt for us. So, so... You know why? How can you promise that when you come, it's not going to go up, but it's just going to go down? Because and the economy gonna is going stop, to work for We're going to stop wasteful government, wasteful government spending. We're going to have to cut that off. Because government is too big. We have a small government. Very robust and small government. So we can able to embark on the most important things that the country needs. Look at 
Bell alone spent the first year $250 million, $250 million on child flight alone. Travels. Travel, just to fly. See? This is what everyone says before they sit okay, there. Okay, but exactly. the thing is, but listen, you see, we cannot measure everybody in that way, though. Because we come from different backgrounds, we have different experiences, we have different exposures and interactions. I'm not going to see that way. So because why? Because I know where I'm coming from. When I was young, I don't have the privilege to have nice uniforms and nice shoes and going to school. I don't have that privilege. I have one pants and one shirt. Sometimes I don't, my, my shoes are completely torn up. I don't even have lunch going to school. So I know where I'm coming from. I know what it means to be poor. But people tend to forget easily. That's why it's necessary. We intrude ourselves, no matter whether you're going to be a Christian or you're going to be a Muslim, we have to be endured with religious beliefs. Let me finish, because the sister said, Every institution that does not build on divine principle, that institution will fail. Because that's the only one that will guarantee the fundamental freedom for everyone and the only one that will constrain how the government will behave. And Cicero said it being before Christianity. So those are the principles because if you violate that we are fleeing ourselves and rejecting our own humanity. So, so, so this brings me to a question that I wanted to, I have been longing to ask. I know you have a religious background, you're an imam, <laughs> you are educated in the English way. Two things that bothers, that, mm -hmm. that comes to mind when I think about your presidency. Okay. Two things. Um, <laughs> politics is corrupt. Yeah, it is. Uh, power is corrupt. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, even if the leader is not corrupt, the people around you most of the time are corrupt. Okay. From a religious background, you know, stealing from your people is haram. Okay. Eating what is not yours is bad. Of course. And for you, I'm thinking, you know, for you getting into politics, are you bothered about that? Leading people and sometimes you get the, the powerful uh, lobbies coming around, knocking at your door, bribing you, giving you money just to get favors. As an imam, as a religious leader, okay. that, is, that is something that is against your religion. Number one. That is against all of our religions, Islam and Christianity. It's, it's, it's not only religion. But, but, but my, even my, humanity. My, my, my morals yeah. against. But then, and secondly, um, do you always have in mind that a certain section of the community might be offended, for example, when we have a president who is always quoting the Quran, they, they will think, they will feel alienated like a section of the community because they were like, oh, he is They're more, promoting. he no, no, is no, no, more, no, no, uh, no, no, not really. I'm just thinking, do you, do you yeah, have yeah, that I, I look, I look at that, I look at that. It's, it's, it's a very sensitive, yeah, religion well, is very sensitive. It is, but, but what I'm saying is, I'm not a president for Muslims. Yeah. I'm president for all. That's why I said, I said, you either be Christian or Muslims. Yeah. This is something that will be guiding for us so we can able to succeed. It doesn't matter what regions that you come from. You know, we, it's a circle of state. We're not going to disenfranchise all the religious beliefs within this umbrella. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. But you can have a base. Each and everyone will have a we base. We do have a base, yeah. Of course. But religion is my base. Mm -hmm. So this is what, uh, this is what guide, this is where I guide my own way of life. I believe what doesn't belong to me is not mine. I just say to you that. That I was pondering on this before. I said we give full measure and weight, and we don't defraud people on their things. Mm -hmm. We should not act corruptly on the land. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So that's my base. So, but that have nothing to do with if she is a Christian. It doesn't mean that in any less or more to me, it's just a Gambian, not a Muslim or Christian. I'm not going to look. Christians or Muslims in a different way. I look at everybody as Gambians. That is my belief that will guide me to do a right thing. And how can you um, achieve that? Because like right now, there isn't any tribal issues, right? Yeah. But it's been, people are mongering about it. Okay. How they believe that if you're from a certain tribe, you would support a certain party. Okay. If you live in a certain area, you would support, you know, 
Is certain it, people. So the, how would you bring that the, togetherness? That's a mediocre way of thinking. But, I mean, that's the reality. I, I know it's a reality. I know it's a mediocre way of thinking. Yeah. Because first, the first thing that we have to think, tribalism is a catalyst for destruction. Yes. We have been all created by one, one God. No one is more human than, than his neighbor. So this is what, one thing is important here is humanity. So, why would it try to be necessary? It's not. But it depends on what kind of leadership the individual provides. How do you interact with people? Yeah, that's the question. Actually. Because if I make it you don't count, how is it going to be? If I only have make a count, you don't count. This is what we have, this is what we have division. But if I embrace everybody and treat everybody the way everybody would the way I would be treated, and I treat everybody fairly, then we will be able to solve these tribal issues. Poverty creates a lot of problems in the society. If people are happy and they are wealthy and they are healthy, these bigger things will disappear. So uh, I know we are running out of time. Let's let's talk about 2021. Okay. Before 2021, your party will be registered and up running. Are you putting up a candidacy uh, in 2021? Yes. You do. Yeah. You're putting up a candidacy in 2021. Yeah. I bit one ah. <laughs> and you'll be saying we 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 we, we can't take. We, we can't, can't take. <laughs> wow, wow. That was... So then, looking at the crowded field, no, no, what I'm are sure your chances? I'm, I'm not looking for fame. I'm looking. No, not for fame. Be... I mean, what are your chances to the presidency? The field is quite crowded. Yeah, it's now. crowded, but you see. <laughs> what do you have? What can I, I, you do I, differently, that for people to leave you, vote for you, and put you up there? My, I, I, I said that before. Yeah, yeah, but say it again. Mm. <laughs> so, so, so. Also Remember, I'll, you have to convince the people. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll convince people, of course, because I said my way of leadership will take effect before I even saw political leadership. Okay. Because seeing is believing. I like that. <laughs> because I started now. I'm working on now. I'm on the ground right now. All right. Transforming things, changing people. That's what I know to do. Because he said you provide. When I give you 10, then let me provide thousands so I can have abundance. <laughs> So finally, I know, uh, before you go, I just wanted to have your opinion on this. Um, so the borough UDP clash, who do you think is benefiting from this? You know... Is it the opposition? No, well, the thing is, there should not be no clash. You know what they said? Yeah. You should not take your friends and allies for granted. You should never turn your back on your supporters. You will fail. Who is that for? Who is that? No, any politician. Only politician, okay. All, any politician. Okay. The people that help you to get there is never turn your back on them. And people who support you in the way is never take them for granted. That's why the politicians fail. When I'm there, I'm comfortable. Oh, okay, I don't know you anymore. So you're gonna need, after climbing the ladder, there are people, people who lay you up. On your way down, you may need them. This is it. You see, this UDP and Barrow of High School is very childish to me. Leaders should not behave like this if they have to cost the interests of the nation. Barrow is supposed to be a bigger person. That was supposed to be a bigger person. They have a role to play in this country. We need unification. We don't need separation. Together we stand. Divided, we fall. There should be no difference in there. We need, he said, do not be afraid to reach out your rivals. Do not. Because pride and stubbornness is something that you can afford. Do not be afraid to reach out to those who oppose you. Because it's necessary. You may oppose me, but you have element that I need to succeed. You may oppose me, but you need a charisma that I need to succeed. Then I need you, I need you. I will do everything to bring you so we can work together. What we need, if we want the success of this country, then we don't need no difference. If Barrow would turn everything around today, make things the way it's supposed to be, I'm out. 
you are out of, yeah. What do, I need, of, what do I need to participate in politics for if everything's going right? I don't need to. Why? I will support him. Because that's what we need. I'm there because I don't say it. But what's right for you might not look right for Fatu. No, what the thing is, but what is right, we know all what is right. We know what we need, what we want. The majority, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about individual, I'm talking about majority. People are crying, this country is hard. Some people don't have food in the table. Yeah. Business are struggling. I am one out of in business. So that's not a federal agreement. It's not. So this is what we have to look. And we have to be very obvious and very true to ourselves. Sometimes we don't let things rule ourselves. It's not necessary because if not, we'll never go where we are. We need to change. If we want opportunities, we have to change things. We need to change. That's what it's supposed to be. So this is how I look at the whole aspect of all this political arena. So I have enormous respect for all the politicians in this country starting from the president, but I don't agree with the economic policies that he do. But that doesn't mean they're my enemy. I shouldn't be his enemy. I shouldn't be supposed to love me because I'm criticizing you so you can do better. That's what the policies are supposed to do. But we do the opposite. We create animosity and vengeance and hatred. And we call ourselves people of faith. What kind of faith do we belong to? Thank you very much, Doctor. I think this is very, very interesting. And our <laughs> audience will learn a lot from uh, the new entrant into the political scene. Doctor, what's your final message say to Gambians that are watching right now? Well, I will say thank you very much for the Gambians. Gambians are wonderful people. They are great people. What I'm going to say to them, coming 2021, Gambians have to take a very crucial decision to select someone veteran, someone completely capable with credibility, courage, resolve, and ability to move this country so we can benefit the dividend of the 21st century. For all Gambians, that's what we need. We don't want to create anything that's going to send us back, but we want to go forward forever, but we we'll never. No, we we'll never. <laughs>
you can you can you relate with your likes you yeah. relate with people you're from the same area with so yeah. that's fine so we can do those tick those boxes but we need to look at as you said who's credible who's capable who can take us forward i'm nagambe at heart once we tick all those boxes i guess we will vote for the right candidate of course uh, that's the key here that's the key because we want if you look at the gambia the strategic location of the gambia you know we underestimate the way what we have you know we are serviceable country to this world so therefore if you leverage that properly singapore is not even going to be better than gambia no. we've heard that before that yeah, well, in gambia be, because why <laughs> we lack the leadership <laughs> Thank you. We lack the leadership. That's the words of Dr. Kante. Thank you very much, guys. Good night to you all. See you next week with another interesting guest. Bye-bye. Okay. Good night to you all.